Hey everyone, this is Cheryl Weigel, and today we're going to talk about strain. Learning about strain is very important in building construction as it can help us anticipate and prepare for various stresses placed upon the structure. So what is strain in regards to structures? It is basically the measurement of the deformation of a structure or beam like this one due to an applied force or a stress. It is usually expressed as a percentage of length change and can be calculated by measuring the displacement of points in the structure before and after loading. Whenever a force acts on a body, there's going to be an accompanying change in the shape or the size of a body. And that's what's called deformation, what we're seeing here. For example, a floor joist might be large enough for its load, but it's bending or deflecting enough to crack the ceiling below. Deflection is what we would call the measurement of strain. Strain is denoted by the Greek letter epsilon, and the formula is change in length divided by the original length. Strain is often caused by mechanical forces such as compression, tension, shear, or torsion. It can also be caused by thermal, electrical, or chemical processes. Here we see um, a type of strain gauge being used. This process involves gauging the amount of force applied to the material and tracking its deformation as the force changes. So with this data, the engineers can determine how much strain or deformation materials can withstand before failing, as well as how much stress or force is needed to cause a certain amount of strain. Calculating the stress-strain curve is an important step in understanding the behavior of materials when exposed to tension or compressive forces. So how exactly do we calculate a stress-strain curve? The first thing we need to know is that the y-axis is going to be for the stress and that the x-axis will be for strain. And then once plotted, we're going to get a parabolic curve. Once the stress levels and the strain percentages are defined, then a graph of the data can be created to measure their relationship. So why do we need to measure their relationship? So this kind of interesting looking man named Robert Hooke was a 17th century English scientist who was known for his discovery of Hooke's Law. And Hooke's Law states that the force needed to extend or compress a spring is proportional to the displacement from its equilibrium position. In other words, deformations are directly proportional to stresses, which is the reason that we need to plot this graph. So stress and strain kind of sound alike. So what exactly is the difference between stress and strain? Stress is the measure of force applied to an object, usually expressed in terms of force per unit area. And strain is a measure of deformation, often expressed as the ratio of change in length or an angle to original length or angle. Stress is your y-axis, and it is load divided by cross-sectional area. Strain is your x-axis, and again, it is change in length divided by original length. So in order to make logical sense of all this and how it works, it's important that we 
understand the design use of direct stress. So for example, say we have a short square concrete pier and it has a side dimension of two feet. So the area of that pier would be four feet squared or 576 inches squared. So we know from industry specifications that the allowable unit compressive stress for concrete is 900 PSI or pounds per square inch, which we know that stress is load divided by cross-sectional area. So to figure out the safe load on the pier, we're going to take the force, which is the 900 pounds, and multiply it by the 576 square inches which is going to be 518,400 pounds. And that's going to be the safe load on those concrete piers, on a concrete pier. The stress strain curve graph is going to look like a line where each point along the line represents the amount of force being applied and the corresponding deformation. This graph can be used to determine how much strain is required for a certain amount of stress. Now we're going to look at what each of these plotted points means. So the first one is going to be OA, which is the proportional limit. And that's the point, labeled OA, in a strain curve graph where Hooke's Law applies. Stress and strain are directly related within this region any increase to stress will result in a proportionate increase of strain. This constant rate of change between the two variables yields the Young's modulus, which is used for measuring elasticity or stiffness. So what is the difference between plastic and elastic? We know that deformations can be permanent or they can be temporary. So if something is considered plastic, that would be permanent because the deformity would remain when the load is removed. And if it's elastic, the deformation is temporary, kind of like elastic and close. It would go back in place when the load is removed. Now we've moved over to point B, which is the elastic limit. Up to this point, the material will return to its original position when the load acting upon it is entirely removed. Beyond this limit, the material cannot return to its original position and a plastic deformation starts to appear in it. So moving over to point C, which is the yield point, once the upper or lower yield point has been passed, permanent deformation will begin to occur in its materials. This is irreversible, because that's what permanent means. B is the upper stress point, while C is the lower yield stress point. D is going to be your ultimate stress point. This is the point corresponding to the maximum stress that a material can handle before failure. Failure is inevitable beyond this point. So what do we think our E point is going to look like? E is the fracture or breaking point. This is pretty self-explanatory. This is where catastrophic failure occurs. In conclusion, it is clear that understanding stress strain curves for construction materials is necessary in order to safely and effectively construct buildings. These curves allow us to understand the deformation behavior of a material and ensure that it can withstand the forces applied during building construction. By studying structural strain, we can ensure that proper safety measures are taken during construction processes and ensure that our structures are safe and secure. Thank you for watching today and learning about the relationship between stress and strain and how it helps us understand how to build safe buildings.